Hey everybody, welcome to the In Pursuit of Workshop and open call between the Getty and Amplifier. My name's Aaron Huey and I'm a National Geographic photographer and media designer. I work in all kinds of mediums from photography to street art, from animation to now virtual and augmented reality. I'm also the creative director and founder of Amplifier. Now you've probably seen some of the work that we do at Amplifier in the streets over the last couple of years. We are a nonprofit design lab that makes art and media experiments to amplify the most important social movements of our time. So we've learned a lot about storytelling over the past few years and how to distill really big ideas down into really simple wording and symbols. Uh, and we do that often with only one, two, or three words like we the people, uh, like this image behind me. And through images like that, we're able to reach millions of people, sometimes tens and hundreds of millions of people, uh, to start new conversations that can drive real change. At the core of this work is a pretty simple combination of strong images and simple language. The goal is to try to stop people in the streets or wherever they might be in the digital world and make them say, hey, I wanna know more about that, or I believe that too, and I wanna do something about that. This kind of work is not new. It's a continuation of a long history of cultural and political campaigns, as well as the works of countless artists we can find in art history and art present. This kind of storytelling defines culture and makes new culture. Now, through this workshop, you have a chance to try making work like this yourselves. And we're so excited to bring you into this process. Let's get started. All right, we're ready to get started. Uh, this instructional video is photography based and we're gonna be making a lot of photographs and finding a lot of photographs and using a lot of photographs, but this is not a typical photojournalism how to do photography class. Um, ultimately, this workshop is gonna be about helping you make your own artwork out of an image and text combined. And that final artwork might be something that tries to convey a message uh, ask a question or demand a change. So In Pursuit Of is a really great prompt because it leaves so much room for your interpretation. Um, are you in pursuit of justice? Would that justice be for you? Are you in pursuit of justice for your family, your community, the nation, the world? Uh, are you in pursuit of peace or maybe just peace of mind? Uh, are you in pursuit of gun reform? or are you in pursuit of gun rights? Are you in pursuit of something even more specific? It could be in pursuit of uh, climate justice. It could be in pursuit of immigration reform, equal rights, equal pay, um, or it could be as something as simple as are you in pursuit of love or in pursuit of being wide awake? So all you need for this project to get started is a digital camera or a film camera uh, if all you've got is a camera phone, that's perfect. In fact, all the examples we're gonna do today are with a camera phone. Uh, you'll also need a notepad or a digital notepad of some kind. That could even just be a text editor in a phone. Um, if you wanna do this all in analog though, you can also just start with a paper and pencil. So this video is broken down into four units or lessons, so please make sure you do all four. Uh, let's get started. So the world is full of stories. They're literally everywhere. Everywhere I look right now, in this room and outside of this room, I can find stories. Um, and that means that even in a moment like this pandemic, you can find stories even in your own living room. So there are two approaches that we wanna try. Uh, one is making photographs with a really clear intention, uh, all centered around our specific in pursuit of idea that we're gonna write about. And another is going out with a completely open sense of discovery with no preconceived ideas at all and just seeing what we find. One thing both of those approaches uh, share in common though is that you do need to enter both of them with an attitude of curiosity uh, and openness because if you go into some of these situations with an absolute rigid idea in your mind, you're not going to find what you're looking for. You have to be open to what you actually see happening out there in the world and adjust to that. So this isn't like making traditional documentary images and all of the rules around that, because for this project, in a lot of ways, we're breaking, and it's meant to break, 
those traditional rules because we're going to be putting text right over people's faces or we'll have huge areas that are completely empty that are made just for text. So we can forget a lot about a lot of the traditional rules of aesthetics and composition for this project. When I make photographs for a magazine like National Geographic, there, I wouldn't say there's rules, but there, there are expectations. We need images that have a lot of layers and don't need as much explaining. Uh, there can't be too much of this or too little of that. Um, and we can't cut images and put them together. For this project, you can. You can actually cut up images. You can be too close. You can be too far away. And the reason you can do that is because the text we're going to add is going to bring those photos to life. So let's start with the idea of going out with intention and making those photographs with an idea that you already have. Um, we need to start by asking ourselves uh, the question, what, what are you in pursuit of? And we're gonna do a little writing exercise uh, to start getting some of that out so that we can go out with those ideas in mind as we make the photographs. In your mind, uh, what you're in pursuit of, what does that look like? Is it in going to involve images of people? Is it in going to involve uh, images of community, of neighborhoods? Uh, is it going to involve images of nature? Another really important question is, uh, where can you go to make the kinds of images uh, that you have in mind? Can you get to those places safely? So if you have an idea of a place or a thing that you can't get to, uh, I've got ideas for you. I've got some secrets and I'm gonna show you how to get to those places and make those images later on in this workshop. Let's start with a really simple example, though, of something we could get to, just to run through a scenario. Uh, let's say that you're in pursuit of freedom, or freedom to move, for example. You know, with the pandemic right now, uh, all of us are really restricted and can't go where we want to go, so that's an easy topic to look at. So maybe we go out and we're making images that show big, open, expansive things that are images of freedom. And uh, that might be leaving your house and making photographs of the sky, things that are in expansive space, things that uh, look like they might take you out of uh, the city that you're in or the room that you're always in uh, that don't show any man-made things. A lot of this is about creative framing. If you're looking for freedom, you just cut out all the stuff that doesn't look like freedom. And that means like look, cropping in on something really far away, maybe way up in the sky or just a little tiny piece of a scene uh, to cut out all of the things that don't reference freedom. Or you can take the opposite approach and photograph the thing that you're trying to escape. Now, while you're doing this, try to make 10 or 20 images. Don't worry about a specific number, but try to make too many images because we can always edit this down and the more you have to play with, uh, the more fun this is gonna be. Remember that these are all sketches. These are all prototypes. Uh, none of this has to be a perfect photograph. Uh, or say everything you want to say. Um, we'll find ways to say a lot of those things with the text. Just remember there are no wrong answers in this. There are no bad pictures. We can literally work with anything and we can take a lot of those pictures you don't like and completely flip the script with the text that we're going to add. Now while you're out there looking for images that speak to the theme that you have in mind, that specific theme, also keep your eyes and your mind open for surprises. Uh, you may see things in your surroundings that reference important topics of our time or this moment or the news and that trigger an image or an idea uh, connected to something you care about. So I'm going to give you a really cool example of what I was talking about, about being open to surprises and just catching what's around you. Um, I walked out of this building uh, earlier with just this phone in my hands and I made a two minute loop, maybe less. I walked across the street to a gas station, to a couple frames, walked back. Uh, and the images I made in that two minutes, I could do this entire project with. I'm gonna show you what I saw really quickly and later in unit two, I'll go through the entire project, uh, adding text and making a completed piece as an example. Right across the street, I photographed a gas station. It was bad light and there was nothing interesting happening. Uh, remember, it doesn't matter if the lighting is bad. I'm going to show you some of those pictures. Here, you can see in my library here, uh, this first photograph, if I zoom in on this photo, there are plenty of things to play with. I can make three great pieces of art out of this one terrible photograph. For example, on the left, there's a guy filling up a gas tank. It's not a great picture. If I were to redo it and I wanted to talk about fossil fuels, I'd probably get up a little bit closer and try and get a better scene of that. 
but you could figure out how to make a piece of art with that close up. Uh, I can scan over to the top of the frame and I can look at windows in this public housing. Maybe that's a project and a piece of art about I'm in pursuit of a big backyard. It could be about space. It could be about the equity of housing. I could scan over and look at the bottom of this frame. I could look at this, like, this guy holding all the chips and snacks and food that's bad for you um, with this kind of fake look, and I could talk about being in pursuit of something real. I could talk about being in pursuit of healthy foods. There's so much you can dig into in this photograph. Uh, when I go to the next frame, that's just the first frame when I walked straight out of the building. When I go to the next frame, now this is where it gets super exciting. Something actually happened right in front of me. There's a guy, look at this, with a shopping cart full of bags of ice. So photojournalism, activate. I made a whole bunch of frames. I made six frames in a row. That was awesome. And then right before I walked back into the building, I looked down, there's a whole bunch of plants. It made cool layers. I got a real close up of plants in a regular planter outside a building. So this is where I really want to start taking text and showing how you how we're going to layer it into these images. But before we start that, I really want you to take the images that you've made and get some one-on-one -on -one feedback from your peers, uh, your teachers, your parents, whoever you're working on this project with. I want you to ask both yourself and them, what do these images make you think of? Do they bring up any emotions? Uh, do they see things in these images that you didn't? Are there images that make them laugh? Are there images that make them sad? Uh, are there images that make them wish something was different? You may see things uh, on a second look at these images when you look deeper that you might see emotions. You might see an image that has a feeling of emptiness or sadness or hope. You might also just see some images that make you want to ask questions. So while you're doing this, take some notes and choose a few images that you want to make text photo mashups with and set those aside. So I will say that if you're photographing people, uh, try to put your heart into it. Um, try talking to people and going a, a layer deeper because it'll give you a lot more to choose from. People you can really connect with, people you can really communicate with, maybe even in your own family, those kind of images are gonna give a different kind of connection when we work with the text and on those images later. Try making photographs in your home, try making photographs in your neighborhood, and if it's safe enough, try making photographs uh, further out in your city uh, to find new scenes. Okay, that's the end of unit one. Get out there and make some pictures. Welcome to day two. We are going to get into working with images a little bit deeper today. Okay, let's start by looking at the photographs I made yesterday at the gas station, and I'm gonna tell you what I think can be done with them with text. Now, I can do this whole thing on my phone um, with a text editor app, and you can look up different ways to add text to your photographs on a phone or on a computer because there's so many different ways to do this, but I am going to use up, I'm gonna use for my particular phone, I'm gonna use the markup tool by uh, taking a photograph and setting it up to email to myself. I can click on that photograph and then be able to use a markup tool to add text and do drawings on those images. So let's try it. So let's go to the image of the man pushing the shopping cart full of ice because it's a fun one. And it was something that was really happening. There's a bunch of pictures to choose from. I'm gonna hone in on this second frame. I'm gonna zoom way, way in on that image and have any of you ever heard of ice in a different context than a person pushing a shopping cart full of bags? We often hear ice referred to uh, in the news as immigration and custom enforcement. This is a great opportunity to have fun with an image and play with ideas around immigration reform. So for this image, and because I've seen a lot of art on this topic, uh, I'm gonna use the word abolish. It's a very strong word, and I'm gonna tie the word abolish to these objects, and I'm gonna type with my text editor, abolish. I, I don't have to have it going straight across in one word. I can have it in a stack. We can play with all kinds of ways to do this. We can make it really bold text. And there you go. That's a piece ready to print. Uh, let's do one more really quick. Uh, the plant right outside this building's door. I can zoom way in on that. Uh, what am I in pursuit of with this one? 
in pursuit of clean air. With this one, maybe you're getting really specific. Maybe you're in pursuit of a world that uses plant-based packaging instead of plastics. So much of our world is about extractive industries. You could use something like this, an image like this, to talk about regenerative and literally just write the word regenerative. An image like that would make people ask a lot of questions. So now that you see all the ways we can add messaging to imagery, if you want to, in your own time, uh, go out and if you got some new ideas from this uh, and try some more experiments, this is all a sketch. If you do go back out again, uh, try to add some creative constraints. What I mean is, uh, try to do something almost the opposite of how you did it last time. If before all your images were kind of far away because you didn't want to engage, this time get really close in, like get too close. And if last time you were doing all really close ups, this time pull way, way back and get a lot more space. Okay, now let's talk about my secret that I talked about in the introduction, and that is, how can you get to a place uh, that you can't travel to because it's not safe or because we can't travel during the pandemic? Or how can you even get to places uh, that are back in time? A lot of other people have photographed those things and we can get access to those photographs. Um, I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. So, number one, there is a time machine in your house, most likely. It is the photographs that your parents own from a time when there were big heavy cameras that shot film and pictures were real objects. Most likely you have some of those either hanging on a family photo wall, in a drawer, or in storage somewhere. If you have any interest in looking at your own family history and lineage and maybe what they were in pursuit of, uh, that is an amazing place to start looking for images. The best way to do this I think is to look at some, some real examples and I'm going to I'm gonna show you some photographs from my family that I just, I pulled this stack of photographs uh, out of an old uh, storage bin and I could come up with 100 projects out of this one stack of photographs. So just like we did with the gas station photos, let's get really specific. Uh, these are old photographs from my family and there's just endless things to work with here. Uh, photograph of my mother from the 1970s. You could do so much with this, with the empty space in this photograph. Like what were women, what was happening in the world of women in the 1970s? Is this, can any of this be about equal pay, equal rights in any form? So I could use an image like this that has too much space and all the space around it to talk about uh, freedom, clean water, dirty water. Uh, there's so many things you could go into with, with this. You could change the color of it. You could make this whole photograph kind of blue so that it looked more like something clean. Uh, we've got old photographs. We've got old photographs from uh, American National Monuments. This is the place they call Devil's Tower, which is a really insulting name because it's really a sacred place to Native Americans uh, called uh, Matotipila. Uh, and an image like this, we can dig into uh, protecting what is sacred, uh, public land rights, uh, issues around inappropriate naming of uh, Native American monuments. Uh, another image, uh, this is a picture of me uh, probably in sixth grade with my grandfather uh, and this is uh, a place my grandfather spent the last six months of his life. Um, so it's kind of one of those images that triggers a lot of emotion. It's pretty sad. You can cut this image down and really focus in on, let's say, just him. What does it mean to be an elder uh, having to be cared for for years and years of your life, uh, unable to get out of bed? Um, this could be made into an imagery about elders, about loneliness, about caretaking, about our medical system, uh, but that's a frame I would do right there. You could put the text at the top of that. You could put the text right across the bottom of it. So that's the time machine. Uh, now let's take a look at how to get photographs of places that are far away, uh, that we can't get to, uh, or that we're not supposed to go to. And we're gonna do that by looking at the Creative Commons.
So Creative Commons images can also be a kind of time machine because it's a collection of over 500 million pictures available for reuse as long as you're not selling them that stretches back uh, over 100 years and all the way up to earlier today. You can even find Creative Commons images in places like Flickr if you go to pages run by uh, the U.S. government, the U.S. Department of State, the U.S. Department of the Interior. Check any of those pages and you'll find some really high quality images. Another really great resource is the National Archives catalog. And this you can search for photographs and you can go all the way back through history and find incredible images from things like the Great Depression, like this image here of a bread line. But really one of the best tools you could use and the easiest is the Creative Commons image search database itself. This has literally over 500 million images in it. It has a search tab that functions just like a Google search bar. You can search for things like, let's say, public lands. Type in public lands, do your search, and this will bring up tens of thousands of images. Off to the left, you will see all of the different categories of images. You have to choose the ones you can modify or adjust. Now you can also look for really important topics like, let's say, civil rights. And scrolling through something like this, you find these incredible images, like images of Martin Luther King. Now, if you do enough digging in a topic like civil rights, you may eventually get to an image like this. Uh, this is a really powerful example uh, by a photographer named Spider Martin, and it's of John Lewis and company uh, as police confronted marchers on March 9th of 1965 in what was called Bloody Sunday because of the violent crackdown of police on peaceful marchers in Selma, Alabama, when the police were trying to enforce segregation. So let's use this image as an example. What happens if you give this image to a group of artists? Well, we have a great example because an arts group called Four Freedoms uh, did just that. Uh, as part of a 50 state billboard campaign, they added text to this image and right across the center, of the space between the two sets of people are the words, make America great again. This is obviously a reference to the racial tensions being stoked in America over 55 years after the original photograph was taken. So how does this image change with that text? How does this image change if we, if we move where that text is located? What if the text was just under the police? Would that change the meaning? What if we moved the text and put it only under the civil rights group? For this project, there are no off-limit topics. We are living in a world of upheaval. All around us, systems are breaking. There are a lot of things to work on. There are a lot of movements happening. If you feel strongly about a topic and it relates to your In Pursuit of theme, don't let anyone stop you from pursuing that. All right, that's the end of unit two. Next, we're gonna start digging in to what you want to say. So now we've gone through three different ways of making and finding images. And so you should have at this point set aside uh, the favorite images that you wanna work with and have a whole pile of pictures or collection on your phone or computer. So now, take that collection of images and think about if you want to narrow it down even more uh, to the images that you really want to work with to start layering text on. All right, to begin this process, we're going to do some writing. Uh, I'd like for you to write uh, 100 words, let's say a paragraph or two, uh, about your in pursuit of topic. And we should be going deeper this time than we did in the first exercise in unit one where you just wrote down some intentions about going out with your camera. Really dig deep, and as you do this writing, uh, try to include some emotions, some intentions. Uh, really, really dig in because those are the words we're gonna use to pair with this photography. Now, look over your images and try to see if there's anything those images are trying to say to you. Uh, that you were not originally intending. And we can use as an example uh, the photographs I took of the man uh, pushing the cart full of ice. That was not something I thought I was going to get, but that image then brought up a whole new kind of conversation. Look for images like that and those surprises. Do any of those new ideas fit your in pursuit of theme? Uh, if they do in any way, it's all fair game. 
So now I'm going to go over some of my own family photographs and do this writing exercise with you so you can see an example of how you might write about uh, your images. So I'm going to start with some of those photographs we looked at earlier and I want to actually write about these pictures of my mother in, from the early 1970s. Uh, if we're writing a paragraph about this, there's so much to dig into, into uh, feminism and the women's rights uh, movement in the time of the 70s. So here we could start our writing uh, by coming in at a really high level, and just talking generally about what we're digging into here. In the 1970s, women in America were fighting for equal pay, reproductive rights, and fighting uh, in general against uh, legal inequalities of all kinds. Now we're not going to write the whole essay here. Um, because that would take too long. I want you to go and do your own research on any of these topics uh, that you're writing about. But it's really just about trying to get as many words out as you can for us to be able to choose from later. So uh, I encourage you to go online, do searches, find as many sources as you can, uh, get a lot of words out on the page, look up these topics. Uh, and when you go into these sites, this is not like an English class where you can't, um, you can't take language from these, you, you know, we're not supposed to plagiarize in English class. You can't cut and paste this stuff. In this, you can because really we're going to ultimately cut all this down to two or three words at a time. So it's really you just got to get the words on the page. I often end up also looking back to historical imagery, especially if we are in the continuation of a, of a movement that has had protests in the past. Um, and activism in the past, these signs have such incredible language on them that is sadly still relevant today that you could pull from this exact language from these images uh, that are 50 years old. Okay, so eventually after doing all my research and doing all my writing, I end up with my couple of paragraphs here. And the goal is to get enough writing that I can really start editing it down. I know already which image I want to use it's this image of my mother. And so when I look at this image, um, my goal is to have enough writing that I can eventually get out the key issues and words that can turn this into the poster that I put out into the world. And we're going to edit all that text down and make those choices in Unit 4 tomorrow. Now you're going to need uh, your favorite images, and you're going to need to bring together all the text that you've written so far from units one and two. Now, when you look at all of this stuff together, you see the images and you see all your writing, is there a story that emerges? In that story and the, and the elements that you have, do the images and the words match and complement each other? Do those words amplify uh, the message of that picture? Or are the words in conflict, uh, creating maybe something uncomfortable. Uh, and don't be afraid to do that because those opposites uh, can create really amazing opportunities uh, to make people question things when they see your art. Okay, so now we're gonna do a writing exercise uh, with those paragraphs that you've written. And we're going to start editing those down uh, from these larger chunks of text down into simpler and simpler language. So here we've got the writing uh, that I did originally. We've got my three paragraphs. I'm going to start grabbing strong wording that we can use uh, to build the statements to go with the image. So we've got equal pay. We've got the patriarchy. We've got sexism, uh, equality, discrimination, uh, human rights, liberation. All of these are words that we can use to start building with. So equal pay could become, we demand equal pay. Uh, the patriarchy could become destroy or smash the patriarchy. Liberation, liberation now. Sexism, from our earlier research of looking at the signs, I remember seeing a lot that said sexism kills. Equality now, really simple. Discrimination, harder, but you could go to uh, something about discrimination, not your object, or even further, not your baby. And human rights, a very simple one. Women's rights are human rights. And now we've got all of this language. Any one of these would make a strong piece with the right image. For the image of my mother, I'm going to take this one, uh, not your baby. Put it on there. It's ready to go. This piece is done. 
now you've got your words and you've got your text and we're gonna start putting them together. So whatever you're using to do that, whether it's a text editor on your telephone or whether it's on a computer uh, or let's say even you're stuck with doing this in analog, uh, you can print these photographs out and hand write things on them. Some of our favorite pieces at Amplifier have used uh, Xerox photography and handwritten text. So there's really no limits on this, but get out all the tools you need to be able to combine text and photos and let's try some combinations. This is a fun place where we can really go through some amplifier examples too because even though a lot of this amplifier art uh, has been transformed by artists, we're still dealing with some of the same exact ideas. The relationship between the image and the text is still central. So when we look at work like these two pieces by Nicholas Lampert, you see that this is photo-based uh, imagery. These are like Xerox style and he's playing with the text and color and with punctuation. So when he says, who has power, that can be a statement or a question. And the same thing with decides. Who decides? Or who decides? As in, these are the people deciding. We the people. It changes who we expected to see in that image four years ago and emphasized in America that it includes all. Ernesto Urena's We Who Seek Justice is right on theme for a project like you're working on. Uh, because it's what they are in pursuit of. Um, this is made from three different photographs of three separate people brought together in one frame. Uh, you can try that too by collaging elements together. This piece, No Sides in Climate, uh, it plays with one photograph and two color schemes, making this about politics uh, with one simple image and simple language. We're working on a project called Reset Capitalism uh, with the artist Thomas Wimberly about making a less harmful version of capitalism. We can play with text in that way by making crossouts. So in this example, the word minimum is cut out and it says living wage. So we don't want a minimum wage, we want a living wage. You can play with crossing out text as well. This is another collage by the artist Chip Thomas. This is three photographic elements combined with handwritten text in between. So see, it's a great example that you can do handwritten pieces in pen or Sharpie or paintbrush. This picture by Lauren Crew for the Women's March rally uh, is right on point for the kind of work that you're all making, adding a question in text over a pure photograph. This image by Joey Nix does the same thing. It brings together text with a powerful image of what could happen if we don't suspend rent. It's saying, will people end up living in their cars during the pandemic if we don't find a way to suspend rent? So now you've seen a lot of examples of how text and photos can come together. Uh, let's get together all of what you've made and try a few ourselves. While you're putting these together, remember you can play with things like punctuation, can add question marks to things, asking the audience to literally ask that question of themselves. You can use visual graphics if you want to, like this unfollow button. Try playing with visual graphics if you want. You can incorporate text into images like the T in vote on this burning cross image uh, from the California wildfires. Uh, you can use text in a way that asks the audience to complete uh, or add to the phrase. So this says, where at least I know I'm free. Uh, this is a reference to uh, the lyrics, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And it makes the audience ask questions about what that means in relationship to guns and nationalism uh, and things like that. You can also try putting a word uh, over an object like this or playing with text that is already inside of uh, your frame. So here we add the word abolish to something that already has the word ice written on it. You can add text to packaging like this. And remember too, you can use, uh, try a lot of words uh, that are verbs, action words, doing words like remember, like protect, imagine, fight, stand up, stand up for. There's all these ways that you can really activate your language by adding words like that. When you've finished trying all of the word and image combinations you want to make, 
Try sharing some uh, wherever you share imagery with your friends. Try sharing them online and see what kind of reactions you get. Also be sure to share this work with your teachers, your peers, your parents, or whoever you're working on this project with and get their reaction. Maybe they'll have ideas that help you think about text in a new way and inspire you to make a change in some of those pieces at the last minute. One of the most exciting parts of this project is that we're gonna take some of our favorites and work with you to get them into their final shape so that we can project them into the streets this winter. As part of the Getty Unshuttered project, the Getty Museum is also making the incredible opportunity for some of the work made with this project to be exhibited at the Getty Museum itself. So please make sure that you submit this work to our open call and share with us a little bit about why you did the project uh, in your mission statement. Don't forget to set up a profile and submit at community.amplifier.org or we won't be able to see your work. I have to let you go now, but this has been an incredible project and I can't wait to see what you've made. If you like doing this, keep doing it. You might just fuel a movement.